Okay, so uh, we've been best girlfriends for, I have no idea, it seems like we've always been together. Um, <laughs> but one of the things that I love about you is that you are so talented and of course I'm drawn to talented people. I'm a singer-songwriter, you're a, a painter and I have paintings of yours in my home um, and when I look at them they make me smile because they remind me of you but wow. you're my favorite painter and you know I'll tell you if you need a breath mint I'm, I'm one of those <laughs> personalities you're my favorite painter now talk about COVID because I was I was wondering about this yesterday aren't people stuck at home and mm -hmm. they could be yeah. doing this they could be doing this um, absolutely. I think there are a lot of people that are very stressed out and sad and lonely and not getting able to, uh, they're not being able to see their loved ones and get out and have their normal life. So my prayer is that by doing this, by painting, learning to paint and being able to kind of hang out with us for this Painting with Friends episode, that they can have some fun and maybe learn something too, yep. pick up a new hobby perhaps. Yep. Our therapy, what we're doing right now, can change yeah. people's lives. It's very therapeutic. It, it uh, raises your serotonin levels and... Good girl! Yeah. Say uh, cheers, serotonin. <laughs> serotonin. And dopamine. <laughs> dopamine. <laughs> Those are the feel-good brain chemicals that we all want. Right. And absolutely. that's what I get when I paint with you. And it lowers your... <laughs> is it cortisol? The, uh, so it makes your stress hormones go down. And your happy hormones go up, and so that's what we want. So that's what you're doing, and that's why I love. I'm so painting. impressed. Well, I'm always talking impressed. about the brain and neuroscience. Um, so you're rubbing off. So if we can paint together and then have these beautiful pieces to put on our walls of our mm -hmm. homes to make them more individualized. I know, and to think. Here we have a blank canvas, but something is going to be on it. It may not be something that's going to end up in the Louvre. I don't know, but it might. Who knows? Well, if you do. Let's it. hope. <laughs> I don't know about that. But I'm so glad you're here. And by the way, this is Naomi Judd, if you don't know who this is. Award-winning, Grammy, multi-Grammy, winning singer-songwriter, entertainer, author. And I'm funny. And funny. <laughs> and actress everything so i'm so blessed to have you here and just so glad that you want to try another one of the arts you do so many creative things and that you're willing to try this painting thing with me so yay thank you for being here being so brave so these are all acrylics these are acrylics these are whole bind heavy body acrylics and i have basically a, a basic setup here with a warm blue a cool blue a warm of each of each of the primaries so the primaries are blue red and yellow and there's a warm and a cool of each one of those along with an acrylic uh, titanium white so i'm going to go ahead and talk about these and put the colors out here on this palette paper and we'll have um, a little bit of instruction here. These colors that I'm using here, let me make sure I have all my glasses so I can see everything. This is Hansa Yellow Light, and I'll have all these listed in the comment section so you can purchase these um, if you'd like to get them. Cadmium Yellow, and this is Holbein there, fabulous company and they this is primary magenta and you're not going to make me do cleanup are you no okay. clean up on alpha four no that'll be me <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to clean up and this is cadmium red they have 113 different colors you can choose from so huh. pretty amazing but i'm just going with um, the primaries because when you're starting to paint these are the only colors you need to have or a warm cool of each primary to get yourself started and then you can mix your own colors this is thalo blue and ultramarine so this is on a stretch canvas yes this is by Fredericks it's a red label I think these are 16 by 20 and um, they're kind of big but I thought let's go big today let's just hey go big or go I home I could have right? said that yeah Let's, let's do something massive. So we've got a little bit of um, Mars Black, and these are our main colors here we're going with. And 
We also have, and I want to put this out, this is gel medium. And this helps your colors to, it's, it's like it will extend the colors a little bit and also keep them wet a little bit longer. Because these are acrylics and they dry a little fast, I'm going to do a little spritz, get a little water on there. And so you have some great brushes over there. Do you want to grab those? Those are Dynasty brushes. Ooh. They're black gold, brand new. Ooh. So you get the new ones. I get the old ones. And I just want to show a little bit. This is a dagger brush, so it kind of does neat edges and curves. Mm -hmm. And this is like a flat brush, a round, another flat, and a little bit of a, this is a, uh, I think that's a filbert. Yeah, that's a filbert. But anyway, these are just a variety of sizes and shapes that I'll also have for you guys to see in the comment section. But, um, and then there's some little ones here too, but if we need little ones later on. But when you start painting, you usually start with the biggest brush first. So let's look at what we got here. Um, we're going to do roses, and we'll talk all about roses here in a minute. But whenever I paint something, Naomi, I like to, if it's a reference of something and I'm not looking at it, I like to um, print my reference out in black and white and also in full color. That way, when it's black and white, you can really focus on the shadows. tones. Yeah, and the shadows, exactly, of your lightest lights and your darkest darks and okay. everything in between. It helps you just see value because when you go to color, for a lot of people, that's a little overwhelming. But if they mm -hmm. look at that, they can they can see it. A rose is a rose is a rose. Yeah, and roses have particular meaning to people, don't they? Yes. What do they mean to you? My mom, we were, Daddy had a gas station, and like when I asked for a bicycle for my birthday, I got a used bicycle, mm -hmm. and there were four of us kids to feed and clothe and all. But, and Mom didn't have anything. She had like three dresses, and I always wondered why on Sunday she worked in the nursery instead of going to church with us. It's because yeah. she, did, she didn't have a hat. Oh. Um, so anyway, I was always very aware that she didn't, Daddy didn't give her presents or anything. She had three rose bushes in her backyard. And they were special. I'd wait till there were a couple of blossoms and I'd cut one and just put it in a mason jar mm -hmm. on our kitchen table. And, and I, I love the smell of roses. The hippocampus, I'm giving you another brain lesson, the hippocampus deep in our skull uh, is the seat of memories. And we know that roses, uh, vanilla, as well as all your stored family memories mm -hmm. are the most evocative part of an emotion. Mm. It's the f first and primary. Look what you're doing. Oh, I'm just sketching this out, just giving a general idea of this. And I would imagine the smell is very much attached to those memories, too. Like oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Take a whiff but of you, a You know, you, you go to grandma's, we had um, farms. You go to the, the farm and it has such distinct smells. And I'm not talking about the outhouses. <laughs> we had no indoor plumbing back then. Oh, um, gosh. But, yeah, it just puts you in a mood. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, roses mean love. Red roses are the symbol of love, mm -hmm. right? That's why you get red roses on Valentine's Day. So I thought, it's not Valentine's Day yet, but love is love. So let's So I was a pro yesterday doing my shopping, and you walk in, and there's all the, the flowers. Mm -hmm. And I always get a little something um, to put on our kitchen table. And this guy was buying roses. And I said, OK, what did you do? <laughs> Did you say that to him? Of course. <laughs> That's hilarious. He's probably like, none of your business. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to show you something about the color, first of all. So that, this cadmium color is very close to that color, isn't it? So it's, it's already almost there. But we have to find a deeper, darker color, and it's not necessarily black, but you can take like this magenta color and mix it okay, with... Okay, now help me sort of stay up with you, mm -hmm. you genius, you. Give me a piece of chalk so I can start. So you can just start drawing. So I basically am just marking in an idea of where this rose is. And again, it, 
not getting too specific with it, just general lines and and if you don't like anything you've drawn, by the way, mm -hmm. this wipes off with oh, paper really? towel. Oh really? Yeah, that's what's so like great about Pond's cold cream. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna mix up a few dark colors to just to uh, let's see. Let's have a dark gray. So it's always good to have a little bit of a gray mixed up, like a purpley kind of gray. And then um, you can mix it with your colors when you want to. Like I'll take that red, just to have a red gray in case we need that. Hey, this is better than paint by numbers. It is. Oh, I'm liking that. You've got like an abstract thing going there. That's neat. That's how I see life at abstract. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, you're working on that. I'm just going to show a little bit of taking maybe the darks. I like to start with the dark tones first, maybe go with this purpley black color. And I'm, I'm looking at the dark that's in the center here, and I'm just focusing on that. I'm focusing on making these like going in where the, the dark parts are and just it's almost like if if it were paint by number you would you would have the little numbers in there and you would be able to follow that number but I'm, I'm not doing paint by number so I'm just looking and eyeballing where these dark spots dark spots are and um, and I think that's pretty much we want to block in is what we want to do on this first part of the painting. The reason that I went ahead and tinted our canvases a light green was because we're painting something that's red and I thought the complementary color of red is green so it would be kind of interesting to have those colors bounce off. And the other reason is when you have just a white canvas, it's a little bit intimidating, a little bright. It's all very white. But when you put a middle tone on here, uh, you know, a middle value, then you can kind of do the darks and the lights and the painting kind of helps paint itself, so to speak, by having the, the middle tone already on there. So, um, and then you, you can do the darks first, just, I do that so I can see where they are first and it helps me see where the lights and middle tones go. But that's just me, you don't have to do that. But Naomi, I'm gonna show you, so I blocked in just a few dark areas, like where these edges of the flowers are, and then, And I'm using a few of these kind of purpley grays. And I think, yeah, getting one about this size, about that one, is a good one to start is with. Is this a filbert? That one is a flat brush or, or a bright brush. <clears throat> and then I'm going to grab some of this cadmium light and let's see what happens. Just putting a little bit, see how basically, the rose is basically, you can almost just follow a spiral and see how it just suddenly, it almost paints itself when you go in a spiral. I've laid out a few darks and then I'm going in with the red and it already looks like a rose. So it's kind of fun. And the acrylics, because I've mixed this gel medium in with, you know, let me mix some of this into the red, it really helps it stay wet longer so that you can manipulate the color a little bit. And we're not trying to make it perfect, we're just blocking in the, the shapes at this point. That's good. Yeah. Roses are red, palettes are blue. My dog drinks out of the toilet. <laughs> that doesn't rhyme. <laughs> I'm done. Whoa. <laughs> are you serious? No. <laughs> no, no, no. But. I just want to see, I know there's not necessarily yellow in this rose, but I'm going to add a little yellow just to where 
I think the petals are lighter. And that's the fun thing about this. You could have a hundred people in this room painting this exact rose and every painting would be so completely different. How people, you know, apply paint, how they see color, shapes, everything. That's what I love about teaching. I love seeing how everybody interprets. Things. And you go, you take these wonderful trips to Italy and yes, a dozen people at a time. About that, yep. Yeah, about 10 to 12 people usually maximum. Um, and we paint and we travel and we laugh and we you have cook. a really you good cook. Time. We've had cooking classes. We've done all kinds of things. Um, try to be creative. People who may be looking for a, <clears throat> um, a go-to place to get away, could they go with you? Absolutely, once we're through this pandemic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. To know about these trips, you can go to my website, which is rachelmccampbell.com. Say that again. Uh, it's rachelmccampbell.com, and I'll have it on the screen, and it's on the comment okay. section, too. <clears throat> and uh, we, I'm planning a trip to paint in Gatlinburg twice next year. Um, and we'll be doing that, and let's see. I'm, I've got a trip to Santa Fe scheduled. Um, and what else do I have? Santa Fe, Santa Fe is a cool place. Yeah, and in Cincinnati, it's a cold wax medium workshop that I'm doing. So all that's on my website under workshops. And you do these humongous <coughs> murals for <coughs> hospitals and. Yeah, I did. I did a really big one for Vanderbilt Children's Hospital last year, and I'm doing something for East Tennessee Children's Hospital in Knoxville. Great, so that's fun. I'm telling you, art is healing. It's very <coughs> healing, and I think the kids get a lot out of it. Um, I can remember getting a <coughs> paint by number thing one Christmas. <laughs> yeah, did you love it? I uh, I just freaked out. I did it in an hour and then I wanted another one. Right. <clears throat> okay, so how is yours coming along? So you're doing some pinks and and no. I want you to don't forget about doing your darks. Right. Because that's what will set it off. So you being who you are, having done huge things in the music field um, from winning lots of Grammys and selling tons of albums and singing all over the world. Oh, stop. And of course, you've, you're an actress and writer and public speaker. So now at this point in your life, what, what's your, what is it that you haven't done that you want to do? <clears throat> My bucket list? Yeah. What's on your bucket list? Well, <clears throat> I've never painted before. <clears throat> That's one of my things. Because like, you come back from these trips with Mary Murphy and all of our friends, and <clears throat> you have stories for days about the good times your own husband proposed to you in Italian, <laughs> in an Italian villa. <clears throat> so I just wanted to get in on the action. And I know that when we're doing something like this, when we're creating, of course mm -hmm. this goes for songwriting and singing and all the other arts, uh, we lose ourselves mm -hmm. for those moments. We're not worried about um, the rent or politics or anything like that. That's true. And, and I love going to Italy because there's just so many inspiring things to paint. But there's so many inspiring paint things to paint just in our own backyard, too. So I think my goal with this rose is just to create something kind of expressive because I can get very tight and do super realism and I don't think we have the time for that sort of thing. Um, so I'm just kind of going for fun. Like the thing about heavy bodied acrylics too, look how thick you can mm. do that. You can just lay down these colors and get them really you know, a lot of texture. It's really fun. When I was growing up, the only art we had on our walls was a calendar from Miller Funeral Home. Was it really? Mm -hmm. Pretty much. Wow. 
Well, I was lucky that my mother loved to paint. And she would have painting groups over. and She took lessons, and so I got to see what she would do. And uh, she never really did it professionally, but... Uh, but look, look what she handed down to you. Well, um, she definitely handed down the passion, for sure. So, okay, good, you're getting your darks in. I'm gonna make up some more of that dark color. Kind of the purple, mix up a little magenta, a little black. There we go. So stay with us to the end because I have a new joke. <laughs> Maybe we should hear it now. <laughs> should we hear it now? Well, okay. All right. So, I just love jokes, because um, laughter is one of the most important things in the world to me, because it, it's the international language. We, when we laugh, um, it helps us, again, to get away from some of our stress. But, mm -hmm. um, okay, so this guy's a sex therapist, and he's been writing a book on how sex uh, can make us happier. So... He's got this big audience at his book sign, and he says, okay, if you have sex twice a week, wave, wave your hands. So a lot of people in the audience wave their hands. <laughs> and then he said, okay, if you have sex twice a month, wave your hands. And some people raised their hand. And he said, okay, if you have sex once a year, wave your hand. And all of a sudden, in the back row, this little guy jumps up on his uh, chair and goes, me, me, me. And he said, but you only have sex once a month. And he said, today's the day. Today's the day. <laughs> I can only go three minutes without being serious. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, that's pretty G-rated. I think we can hey, keep that in. Reader's Digest. I kid you not. Oh, really? That's where you saw it? Larry does the loves those stories in Reader's Digest. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm reading about uh, the anterior cingulate cortex right here. The tell us, tells us, don't rob that bank, you'll go to prison for life. <laughs> now, what is that that tells us that? The anterior cingulate cortex. And is that our conscience? Well, actually, yes. Is it is. And like I was saying, the hippocampus, which is deep in the skull again, um, is where we store memories. And the olfactory is in here. We were talking about how smell is attached to, to memories. Mm -hmm. um, and this is the temporal lobe, and that is the uh, limbic system. That's where uh, we have religious experiences, when we're happy, when we're listening to the judge sing, <laughs> when we're looking at your beautiful landscape yard out there. That's the temporal lobe. The parietal lobe right back here is... Uh, for space and measurement and all that kind of stuff. And then the occipital back here is for, for um, eyes. How do you remember all this stuff? I love it. I can... Are you just always reading up on the brain? Always. About the brain? Always. Now, how are you doing? Let's talk about painting for a minute. Oh, I like your black. I'm loving that. It's not really black. It's deep purple, but... And every now and then, make sure and just get your brush wet or because the acrylics do dry on them. So you kind of have to get them cleaned out every now and then. So when um, did you know that you were going to be a painter? I, gosh, really not a painter painter until oh, about... I had my first show, I think, 1999. 99? Mm-hmm. It's not that long ago. Yeah, it was 21 years ago. But what happened was um, I was an art major in school, and but I ended up going to New York and and London and and Italy, and I was I was working in fabric design and fashion design and, and antiques with Christie's and 
So I just had all this interest in arts in general, all kinds of arts, and then I started doing um, I start I started doing commercial art. I started doing book covers and things out of uh, New York and L.A. and Chicago, and had different reps there. And then that commercial art business. Now I was doing commercial art for years before. I was a full-time painter, so the full-time painter thing started 21 years like ago. Like the, the big paintings when you walk into a, a big office office building? No. That kind of commercial well, art? that's more corporate art, really. Um, by commercial art, I mean I was doing book covers, um, advertising illustration, like where you see... Um, oh, gosh, I did all kinds of things from... Um, Mattel, I did some Barbie boxes and things like that. <laughs> I know. And then I did uh, beer stuff, like a, combining uh, photography with illustration. So I did the commercial work for a while, and, and it was great. Um, but then Photoshop and royalty-free images came into play uh, after a while. And, Say that again. Uh, royalty-free images, you know, where you don't have to... I don't know what that hey, means. Well, it just it excluded the illustrator from from working anymore. It was just like these when you can go and get free images, basically uh, royalty free, or you pay a small amount for um, an image that you're going to use on a book cover or in an advertisement. So anyway, it really affected the illustration world, which is what I was in, and. So I decided at that point to start doing fine art and really painting personal things to me and and I really enjoyed it so I just kept doing it and loved it and um, kind of haven't looked back. I still every now and then do commercial work like I did a whole bunch of labels for Honest Tea. I don't know mm -hmm. if you remember when I was doing I that. I remember. And it's so that's cool. commercial work because it's advertising pretty much. I get... I get um your stuff at Whole Foods. Oh, the honesty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's when you look at art that's on uh, products and things like that, just know that there is some artist out there who made that with a team of art directors and other people like that. It takes a village. Now, how is yours going? Ooh, I'm liking that purple color. It's mm -hmm. beautiful. Wow. Look at you. What? That's awesome. I did it myself. I know, and you're doing it yourself. It's beautiful. And you know, when we, we um, let's see, you did a few of these buds. I like all your texture you're getting in there too. And you can connect these with leaves or stems if you want to, even kind of abstracted, okay. just shapes. That's good. I remember oh when Wanona was little, we had Wanona isms. We still do today. The other, like she got off the bus, I was right behind her. We were going to walk our dogs, and she looks around. She goes, "Oh, mommy, it's a beautiful day for weather like this." <laughs> That's cute. That's a Wanona ism. So when she was growing mm. up, she'd say, uh, "What's the Conte? The Conte?" And I had no idea where, where she was talking about. And I said, "Would you see that?" We were driving in the car. She said, it's on the sign, Vacante. I said, you mean van vacancy? <laughs> so, and she That's thought uh, she thought the dog was called a chihuahua. <laughs> the chihuahua? <laughs> <laughs> My son used to call mashed potatoes mashed mamemos. So we, we still call it that. It's cute. I love kids. As far as Winona goes, I mean, did you have any any stories while we're painting that are some of your favorite stories to tell about your time on the road? Oh, Lord. I mean, one that's G-rated. <laughs> Family friendly. Uh, Super Bowl halftime comes to mind. Oh, yeah? What happened on that one? Well, there were a billion people watching, and it was the Dallas Cowboys and New England Patriots, I think. So, the Dallas Cowboys and the New England Patriots, I 
think. I don't know much about football, but I knew, do know no, uh, a good tight end when I see one. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> I've said things I haven't even thought of. What do you, what do you, I what love do you that. From me? Tight end. So Ashley had fallen off her horse, Quincy, and broken her ankle. And I insisted on taking her with us because we want everybody to know there's three Judds. So we're... Uh, Super Bowl is like the most synchronized thing in the world. It's just like a Swiss watch or something because we didn't get sound check. But um, <laughs> the Cowboys are coming off the field and we're, we've been in our dressing rooms getting ready. And we're coming up and Troy a Aikens, um, Aikman. Troy Aikman, they were, um, they were rushing us. Those, like a minute is worth what five million dollars or whatever. Right. So his big pad knocks me, and I just kind of and it spun almost completely around. And he goes, "Sorry." And I was looking at his uh, at his helmet, those beautiful blue eyes, and it was like, "Wow, this is big. This what what am I getting into here? <laughs> a billion people? Okay." So we rush out, and in the middle of the stage, they've built this uh, steel like a bridge and Ashley's not in any pain she's just on crutches and we're standing under the bridge um, waiting for them to call our names and I could feel we were so crunched in there it was only about that much room uh, Winona's little breaths of air and she goes mommy why do you keep getting us in this SHIT <laughs> and um, I thought just for a minute like I was a bad mom Aww. and then I went, hell no, this is Super Bowl. I know, this is exciting. Let's do this it. Is... We got up there, oh, so we're getting ready to walk up the ramp and there were holes that big in the steel construction for lights to shine up. You know how they do the, all, all yeah. the beams? And I had on you know, these spike high heels so oh, I had to no. kick off my um, Prada heels and <sighs> go barefoot. But I remember standing there with Wyatt and Ashley, singing that song and thinking, I, I, I don't know how this happened. Right. How did you get there? I, I don't know. It's amazing, isn't it? Yep. When you think where you were and and it, it all happened pretty fast for you, didn't it? As far um, as like when you first started? No, not really. Um, I, just feel I was way. working as an RN, of course. and. I see you. Mm -hmm. And you were kind of peddling the tapes around town at the same time while you were a nurse trying to. Oh, yeah, I take the tape down. Listen. My 57 red Chevy. Oh, wow. The license plate was red hot. <laughs> was it really? And I never thought about it in terms of. You know, then all the truckers started going, you know, <laughs> boop, boop. <laughs> like, pull over, pull over. And I'm just little Miss Naomi Judd from Ashland, Kentucky, and I don't know anything <laughs> about these big city boys. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> wow. And how old was Winona when you first, like, she was, got out there? She was 12. I want to, I'm going to put a saying down here. Okay. You want to keep that for writing something? Yes. That, you can write with that, but it won't stick or anything, right? What's that mean? It's, well, if you wanted to write with something, I would not give permanent. you, it's not permanent. It will wipe right off. Oh. But if you want like an acrylic pen, I can uh -huh. get one of those for you. Okay. Okay. Um, let me ask you in here. Now, while these are still wet, like you can go in here if you want and do, you may not want to, but if you want to do any blending, you know, you can just put two colors together and then just kind of mush them. And it oh. kind of blends if you need that. Or if you want, see where there's a lighter edge on the edge, you can either like take a little yellow, a little white, like on the edge of a petal, for example. 
Let me just show you how to do that. But like, like if you want to do things where the light, it's lighter there and then it, you can see it the black and white, how it's light on the edge. Like you can even put a little color on the edge or something that's lighter to create um, the three dimensionality of a petal if you want. Or you can just kind of keep going more abstracted. But one thing. This is an acrylic pen. So this is an acrylic pen where I took Holbein, um, they are acrylic inks and you pour them in here and you can write like a pen, oh, but okay. it's actually acrylic. So I have only two colors though that are filled right now. That's this fluorescent pink <laughs> or this red. So that's your choice. So, all right, we're back. Um, so I don't know if you finished answering what would be one of the things on your bucket list. What did you say? Of anything that you haven't done. Um, I've done so many things. I've had such a great life. I would like to be a doctor in a trauma bay, like at Vanderbilt, which really gets Ooh. action. I'm a stimulus seeker. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I would love to brush up on my nursing and mm -hmm. go to med school, but I think it's a little too late for med school. But um, what about doing um, Doctors Without Borders, except as a nurse? There's so much travel. Oh, that yeah. interests you. Yeah. Yeah. I've stick closer to home. I like. Being on my tour bus, which is I call my womb, it's my room, because it has everything I need. It's got my star-spangled costumes, it's got my regular clothes, it's got uh, a comfy bed for me and my dogs, and waking up in a different city every night because America is so diverse. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would wake up and look up my, pull my curtains, my room was in the back, um, and I'd said, wow, we're in Midtown Manhattan in New York, or we're in West Palm Beach, Florida. Do you remember the time we got to go to my Angelou's birthday party? And, oh, yes. And uh, we spent the night on your bus, and then we went to Asheville, North Carolina, and to Now, that's around. an artsy-fartsy place. Yeah, that was Asheville. Fun. That was fun. Did you get a massage there or acupuncture? Mm, mm -mm. I don't think so. Did we do that? I don't remember that. But Maybe yeah, somebody I, did. I didn't. I just grabbed three or four of my closest friends and we went on a road trip because Maya was my spiritual guide, my mentor mm -hmm. for years. Yeah. I just thought the world of her. What an amazing woman. Just oh loved her so much the impact, the things that she left behind. So what I was saying on here, you can write over that if you want to okay. with a pen so it'll be permanent because see that just wipes off. Okay. I think it's good to have a bucket list. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I have so many on there. It's There are just so many places I want to go and so you're, things you're I want to try. Bug. You got the travel bug. I would love to, but you know, this whole COVID thing has really been shock to anyone who likes to travel and just assumed that you could travel. I mean, no one's ever told us, you know, you've got to stop traveling. You can't travel anymore. It's it's a real, it's a very different feeling. Um, but anyway, once that starts back up again, uh, on another. the road again, <laughs> I just can't wait to get on the road again. Did Willie Nelson write that? Yes. He also wrote Crazy. Oh, yeah, that's right. And, um, okay, what's... Uh, like one of his famous ones? Um, I Will Always Love You Now, that's not it. Um, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm sorry if I treated you unkind. You were always on my mind. Yeah, yeah, that one. That one! <laughs> 
That's it. I, I would have had to call you at 1 o'clock in the morning. Did you come to see him when he was here playing in the field across the street? That here? was a long time ago. I was on the road, too, that night and missed him. Oh. But um, I will never forget. Um, we were, were working a gig together, and he, Mickey Raphael, his harmonica player, whom I've known forever, came over and said, um, Knocked on my bus. No, I, I went over to his bus, mm -hmm. and when I walked up on the bus, it was like, whoa, <laughs> man, reefer. <laughs> reefer madness. And it was almost like a fog. <laughs> and I just absolutely adore that man. He really? is the greatest listener. Really? Yes. And other people that I've talked to that know him say the same thing. I mean, here he is. He's Willie Stinkin' Nelson, and he could... Um, shut everybody down with his stories and adventures and awards and just all that showbiz stuff. And he's just sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> and we went to, um, one time, I was um, filming a movie in New York and um, Ed um, Bradley from 60 Minutes, my favorite show, was doing a thing on Willie. So Ed was on the uh, um, the road with him doing this doing this piece. So Ed and I are sitting together in the audience, and Mickey's first song is Whiskey River. And then about four songs later, he did Whiskey River again. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> he just forgot. <laughs> he was stoned. <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I don't know how you function like that. I do not know. And he is, I don't know, 120? I don't know. <laughs> I guess he's in his 80s. I don't know. And what was so funny to me is that his ex-wives, he's had a bunch, come to his shows. All of them? Yeah. Are they all friends? <laughs> yeah. I guess that works. And they're all just as nice as they could be. That's wild. Well, he sounds like a really nice person. Oh, he's wonderful. And he started Farm Aid. Oh, did he really? Yeah, that's his gig. I didn't know that. You know, Leslie Satcher wrote one of my favorite songs that she ever did. It's called uh, You Will Remain that he cut. Um, I don't know if you know it, but. No, I'll tell me about it. it. I'll send it to you. It's just, it's a beautiful song. Um, I can't, I'm not going to try to sing it or ah. or do anything stupid like that, but I'll, I'll send it to you. So are you going to be singing anytime soon? When things we don't open know. Up? We don't know. I keep hearing about a possible reunion. Well, I don't know if it's a rumor. Is it a rumor or is it true? I won't tell anybody. <laughs> you won't tell anybody while there are millions of people watching you right now. Oh, millions, you know it. Billions. Billions. Well, you all that are watching, I hope you're just playing with paint, having some fun, Naomi's writing on hers, and she's just so creative. She's she's going off doing all kinds of fun things. I'm just trying to get a fairly uh, representational picture of a rose. Of that some looks sort. like a rose. But anyway, the main thing is that you're having fun and just playing with paint and seeing what these different colors and mixing them together. I'm going to do actually a video on mixing colors and really teaching how to do that and this it's more of like because as you're talking and playing I don't know how other artists work but for me it's a little hard to concentrate entirely on you know talking about exactly how to paint uh, how to mix colors and things like that so um, we'll do that more serious stuff at another time Now this will wipe off. Okay. Right. So I, I tell you what, like it though. You don't, you don't mind it wiping off? No. 
Or you know what we could do? We could spray it with something that'll kind of glue it down there. Look at that. You signed it with a note. So are you finished? Do you feel you're done? Mm-hmm. Okay. We're doing this for fun and we're doing this to hopefully spread some joy and so people can have some fun. But we also want to encourage that if you feel like opening your purse and donating to somebody that Naomi has a wonderful charity that she would like to tell you about. NAMI, N-A-M-I, which is the acronym for the National Alliance for the Mentally Ill. And it's to let people know that there are 42 million of us, actually 48 now, 48 has grown, grown since COVID. There are 48 million people <clears throat> um, suffering from depression and panic disorder, panic attacks. Mm. So those are my peeps. Yeah, and COVID, I mean, good grief. It's been really hard on people with mental health issues. Um, I mean, it's hard. There are a lot of people with food insecurities now. Um, they've lost their jobs. I mean, there are stresses out the wazoo. So, so I'm glad you told us about it. And we'll have more information on the comment section. So look for that and I'll have the link so you can read all about NAMI. And I so appreciate you and everything you do and you're you're an amazing philanthropist too i forgot to add that on your resume oh oh my gosh well, well you help a lot of people one of the <clears throat> interesting things about <clears throat> being around good people it um like you and some other famous people that we know and love that are living <clears throat> in our community these days is that we support each other mm -hmm. Like, what are you working on now? Um, <clears throat> tell me more about it. <clears throat> and I keep getting back to this thing that <clears throat> excuse me. Um, my friend, uh, Dr. Dean Ornish, this is the last thing I'll, I'll tell you. Dean Ornish is a doctor, very famous doctor. He was Bill Clinton's uh, cardiologist to tell you that he's definitely certified. He came to the farm and he taught me about support systems that we are five to ten years longer if we have a support system, mm. <clears throat> if we had good, good relationships. And not having a support system is like smoking three packs of unfiltered uh, camel cigarettes every Whoa. day and being grossly obese. Really? This is from the American Heart Association. Oh my gosh. I'm not just making this up. It sounds horrible, right. doesn't it? Right, it does. No, I know. I mean, the power of touch, like just someone hugging you every day. Yeah. And so for, That's hard on us because you <clears> and I, I are, we're, we're big huggers. And I just automatically, like Elijah got married last week and I saw people that I haven't seen in such a long time. And everybody's just going, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're all elbowing and mask wearing and it's a different time. It is. If anything, maybe it's helping us to learn to appreciate all the things that we did have, like hugging and going out whenever we wanted and jumping on a plane when we wanted or whatever, you know, people did. So it's a I new love world. that lipstick. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I can't hold my attention very long. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Want to ride then... bikes? <laughs> Yeah, You're the best audience, Curtis. <laughs> Curtis Lassen. <laughs> it all, all my brain farts. <laughs> Look at this. I just want to hold this up. Look at this. I did it myself, Mommy. Be kind to yourself, Naomi. That's so sweet. I love the green color, too. Looks. Yeah, I think that works. And mine, I'm going to work on some more and uh, kind of finish it later. I think when we're not sitting here painting. I do want to say though, um, Holbein is generously giving away for those who want to enter the raffle a set of these acrylic paints that we are using today, the primary set. So make sure and enter. And I decided maybe they should tell us this time in the comment section what 
color is their favorite rose because I was looking at roses today online and I forgot there are so many colors <laughs> to roses from lavender and yellow and peach and all this stuff so what is your favorite color of rose you can put that in the comment section and that enters you into the raffle so all the information will be below and then you might win these fabulous paints that you can play with at home and also what will come with that will be the Fredericks panel and I'm going to give away the a set of the Dynasty brushes similar to what Naomi was using. That's pretty cool. Yeah, they're awesome brushes. And so that's that's a lot of art supplies. And so we just want to do that as a thank you for watching and tuning in and subscribing to McCampbell Art Studio on YouTube. I appreciate it. Are you going to show some of your big paintings? <laughs> All the ones that are sitting around here? Yeah. Um, I hadn't thought about it, but I could include oh it gosh, in the video. Well, you have to. You oh. have to. I <laughs> demand it. You demand it. Well, I okay. mean, she can do anything. <laughs> you tell her you want a June bug, you'll get a June bug. <laughs> I, I can't paint anything, but I can definitely try. So, and anyone yeah, can. You can paint anything. And everyone can paint. You know that? I everyone. Believe, I believe that. It's really true. I don't yeah. think everyone can sing, but I think everyone can paint. And I love the painter. Do you know George O'Keefe? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, she's yeah. fearless woman. Fearless. I love her. But did you know that she would call her art, like every so often she would just have a bonfire and burn what she didn't think was up to par? And probably things that we would actually love to have in our homes of George O'Keefe, but Nope. If it wasn't a certain level, she burned it. So it's kind of interesting. That's sad. She had high standards. Mm -hmm. Well, I can appreciate that. Yeah. So she, she was prolific, but there aren't that many pieces because right. of that. Whereas Picasso but the ones, kept everything. I think the ones that she did, of course, are iconic. Yeah. Um, now I don't care for Picasso. Mm -hmm. That just pisses me off. <laughs> that's, that's like, you know, just get, well, remember years ago. Um, Again, I'm going to go to 60 Minutes because they're investigative journalism, and I've learned stuff from that every Sunday night's in my appointment TV. <laughs> they were talking about how the art in New York City was so pretentious, mm -hmm. and was it a monkey or an elephant mm. that did this humongous canvas? Mm -hmm. And you know what I'm talking about, Curtis? It was an elephant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he just like dipped his trunk in the and then whoosh, whoosh. and then these curators were well I believe <laughs> the champagne I believe that that is an exquisite rendition of yeah postmodern <laughs> whatever yeah. so all that to say some art um, I like just doesn't have to symbolize anything it, it just is the colors mm -hmm. and the the movement in it mm -hmm. um, but but that's the thing about art it's subjective and it's for everyone because not everyone's going to like everything and i think any artist who starts painting expecting that for everyone to love their art they're going to be sorely disappointed because just do it because you love it do it because it feeds your soul and someone will resonate with that what I do like about Picasso was his bravery to try all these different oh. styles and just keep moving forward with a new thing, whereas some people stick with one style, what you were talking about. How do you know what your style is? So I think he was an artist who just kept thinking, growing as a person and following, or it followed him, I don't know. But the style and, and, and he grew over time. Um, and then some people just stick with one style their whole life and they're happy doing that and they like to paint the same thing over and over and over again. I'm more kind of leaning toward Picasso in the sense that I like trying new things. And well, I'm looking just, at these humongous paintings mm -hmm. that take up a whole wall <laughs> mm -hmm. and just walking around your house, it's, your topics are so different. Yeah. You've got buffalo <laughs> here. You've got cattle there, you've got horses, mm -hmm. um, and I love it when you... And some put, abstract put, pieces around the other oh, corner. Yeah. And you yeah. can paint also, um, 
You should, you guys should just like come to her house. You could put a little, <laughs> I'll sell lemonade and cookies out there by the side of the road and you can come in and look at this wonderful house. It's a mess, that's why I love it. I, I don't feel guilty when I come here. That's right. You can go home and feel really good about yourself after seeing our house. It's so messy. <laughs> I'm very happy you came to paint with me and to paint with them. And, uh, and just to know that, look at these two different interpretations of the same thing. That's kind of interesting. And I'd love to see what they did. So send me your images and somehow maybe I can do a little art show on a blog on my website. So if everybody will send me a picture of your rose and um, send a good photo of it, and nice lighting, and um, I'll post it. So if we do oils, maybe I can get you to come back and try that. <laughs> You'll try every medium there is. I see a studio in your future at your house. Who paints? Oh. And you just sitting there all chill, listening to some music, some Judd's music in the background, you're painting. You know, music is always <laughs> a good backdrop. That's something we haven't talked about. I know. I know. Thank you again. Sure. You're the best. Love you to death. Lunch and you're tomorrow? so generous. Yeah. We can do that. <laughs>